you're not listening to Pubcast, the terrorists are winning. That's what Jay Moore said. Welcome to the Pubcast. Sit down and enjoy a pint. Okay, welcome to the Top Gun episode of the Pubcast. This one was a pretty straightforward episode uh, as Eric, Allison, and I discussed uh, the movie that cemented Tom Cruise as a superstar and really set the template for uh, all Tom Cruise movies for the next 10 to 15 years. We actually had a lot to say when recasting this movie and came to a rare consensus about who should fill the Kelly McGill's role of Charlie. So check that out and get ready as we break down Top Gun. Send you up against the best. Yes, sir. You two characters are going to Top Gun. I feel the need. The need for speed. Five weeks you're gonna fly against the best fighter pilots in the world. You guys really are cowboys. I'm an instructor at this school. I see 20 new hot shots every eight weeks. I don't like you because you're unsafe. That's right. I am dangerous. Wild heart. I was by the seat of his pants. Yeah, I guess when I see something, I go right after him. It takes a lot more than just fancy flying. Gentlemen, this school is about combat. There are no points for second place. Figured it out yet? That's right. He's the best pilot. No, I think I can figure that one out on my own. Tom Cruise, Kelly McGillis, Top Gun. All right. Top Gun, the no-nonsense plot. Uh, as students at the United States Navy's Elite Fighter Weapons School compete to be the best in class, one daring young pilot learns a few things from a civilian instructor that are not taught in the classroom. I, wow. That's... that's- as it, bad as we've heard, I, I think. think that yeah, it kind of buries the lead. It, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yes, it mentions their fighter pilots, but that's all that it says. Yeah, I think uh, someone did this wrong. Uh, okay, Top Gun. Uh, where were you when you saw it? Where did you see it? Impact, whatever. I definitely speci- specifically remember seeing it where we saw it, when we saw it, some of the people I saw it with. Oh, uh, I do too. I, it is a very specific memory. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Me so, too. And I don't, ha- I don't have that, that often. Yeah. No, this one stands out. Yeah. Likely because of our, our age when we saw it. Yeah. Um, so we were in, this is 86, seventh grade, eighth grade, mm, summer of yeah. summer in between. Yeah. Um, this was, uh, for lack of a better term, this was a group date okay. for our, our class. Uh, I was in a small Catholic grade school um, in Southern California, and we had a class of 35 kids or whatever it was. Um, and something like 15 of us went to go see this, you know, half right. and half, probably boys and girls, give or take. Uh, uh, so... In no way was it a date, but it felt like a date because we were all right. 12 years old or 13 years right. old. Um, so that's where we, that's, that's this, how I saw it. It was at the local mall we always went to. There was an Orange Julius right by the, uh, the theater. <laughs> there was an arcade across the, wow. the way. Like wow. it was, you, wow. this you is were like very best times at Brooklyn High. Yes. Like you were. <laughs> it was, it was very, like Marty McFly 80s kind of wow. thing. Yeah, okay. It was great. I did not see it in the theater, but I was at a friend's house and I, her name was Jessie. And I, she was the third of four girls. She had two wow. sisters who were in high school and they wanted us all to watch it for which soon became obvious reasons to us, but we watch it. We are in her living room. I can 
I could draw out the layout of this living room yeah. watching it. And we, they ended up, um, so this was like early on with VHS too, mm. right? It was, was one of the first kind of commercially available um, buy to own videos. And they stopped and rewound the volleyball scene about <laughs> 13 times. The older girls? Or the, yes, or, the older yeah. girls. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so we're, <laughs> you know, seventh grade, like, started, like, we're just in our yeah. just coming of age yeah. um, thing. And, but <laughs> I, it was so distinct. And I'm like, oh, God. Like, it was so gratuitous and so whatever that, um, yeah, I mean, I, I just remember that whole, it, it was like a defining day, I remember, of my middle school years. I want to come back to that in a second. Uh, Eric, where were you, when did you first see it? I'm sure it was not in the theater. It was definitely not in the theater. It was also in VHS. Um, like Allison said, this was like one of the first sort of like buy to own VHS movies that you could buy. Yeah. And dad bought it essentially <laughs> on spec you know never he never saw it before either uh, but dad is always a big aviation guy and that was a big movie that was all about yeah. fighter jets and he bought it and brought it home one day and uh one day on the weekend and i remember we we were watching it and this was before PG thirteen. The movie wasn't quite R, but it was so. It yeah. Was, but it it was so PG, PG with a bullet. PG with a bullet, <laughs> swearing all over the place. And I remember making a comment to my mom because I was, I was, I guess I was I guess eleven at the time, ish. Yeah. So yeah. I was actually. <laughs> almost like excited about how much swearing was in it because I had never heard that much swearing before. And I made some except, comments. Except for when dad was working in the garage. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. A tapestry of obscenity. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I made some comment to mom about how much swearing there was in it. And after that day, it was, I think it was for like a couple of weeks afterwards Mom would not allow us to watch that movie without a grown-up present. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. So we would, uh, for weeks after that, we were hounding, like Jill, Susan, and I were hounding mom or hounding, uh, not hounding dad, because no. that would never go, that, that would never that's fly. That's a mistake. Yeah. Uh, so we would hound mom and Johnny was living at home at that time. So I remember we would hound Johnny too, because he was a grown up. that if he'd be uh-huh. home with a, we had a grown up there, then we could watch the movie. And I, mom, I don't understand what that was supposed to accomplish. Because I don't know we either. Don't but anything after, any different yeah. when there's a grown up present, but whatever. And you had already seen it. Right. Like, yeah. it wasn't right. Like, <laughs> right. The horse is out of the barn at that point. Like, <laughs> Right. What do you? What's gonna happen? I don't know. But yeah, after a couple, I think it was a maybe at the most. It seemed like a lot longer when you're 11 years <laughs> old, but it must have been only maybe a week or two at the most. Yeah. Mom finally the, got sick of us. Viewing, us she's a, finally, she just said, "Okay, you guys, you guys can just watch." Yeah. On, yeah. on the third viewing, they really let the f bombs fly. Right. But the first yeah. two times, no way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Shortly after seeing this movie. If it was the same summer or if it was just after um i snuck into my first rated r movie oh and that was uh it's a funny name to throw out there but i wish i had chosen uh my first rated r movie better uh i mean my first movie rated r that i snuck in and saw alone without an adult was <laughs> cobra with <laughs> <Metro Columbia. laughs> wow excellent that a is a horrific 80s movie wow. uh, of Stallone's <laughs> bad movies and he's made many uh, it might be his worst so it's up there That's bravo sure. yep worth okay. it 
<laughs> worth the <laughs> risk. So you mentioned this volleyball scene. Yeah. And all that scene in particular, but also throw in the uh, locker room scenes. Just yeah. throw it all into to one yeah. batch. Um, I don't know if it was thought of this way at the time. We were all too young. Um, but in the years after, and certainly seeing it now, uh, my question is, is that scene or those scenes, and is this movie the most homoerotic movie of the 80s? Because that's the vibe I got from this. Was it really? was very? Oh, it was I very. Did, I did not at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not at all. I think it was, it's it was just, like so over the top beefcake that it it swung the other way to me. I'm like, wow, this is like. Yeah, I this did not get. I did vibe. not get that. I did not get that vibe <laughs> no? at all. I took it the other right, way that this was. It was a movie intended to be basically a recruiting film for guys totally. to join the Navy or the Air Force. And this is a way to get the women to go with them to the movies. Mm. There's that. Okay, good. Eric, am I off base? Uh, I've heard a lot of those theories too. And as watching it, I can see it even when it's like just Tom Cruise and Val Kilmer getting in each other's face in the locker room. Yeah. It's, oh, it's all it's all like weird. Yeah, it's know, very strange. They uh, I mean, get so close to each other. <laughs> subtext or not, but it's it's I'm yeah. sure it's not purposeful or anything, yeah. but uh right. it, you know, through a, a older different lens, I'm, that was I'm like, "Oh, this is if you wanted to see that that you could see that." Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, would I agree I would agree with that. That with a lot of different No, I know, things, I know. But, but it's it's so it's so over the top. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess for me, I really kind of thought about it. It was the way to get women to go to see the movie. Yeah. Cause that's, that was, that's the draw in, in my opinion. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about the Navy or the I will just say in recruitment. general though, watching this movie again, everybody is sweaty all the time. Yeah. There, everybody yeah. is glistening yeah. at a minimum and at a maximum, they are dripping sweat all the time. I feel everybody like needs a shower all the time. Not just not just Maverick. Everybody needs a up. shower all the time. Even Baldy Stinger is always sweating. Stinger, yeah. yes. Um, Tony Scott, give me one second here. But I I found it almost distracting this last time. I'm like, gosh, everybody's. I noticed that too. Sweaty. It's like. They're like, where, where is the air conditioning in 1986? <laughs> well, and then I'm like, wow, that sub must be like the, uh, if they're like I, in a submarine or like aircraft car- carrier is like just a stink machine. Okay. I'm looking at it now. Yeah. I think that's a, uh, I don't think, it's not exactly a, a, a calling card, but I think it's uh a regular occurrence in both Tony Scott movies and um, uh, give me his name, uh, Bruckheimer. Jeremy? Yeah. Jerry. 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 Uh, I think it's in both of their movies. You see a lot of that. A lot of sweating? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I could be wrong, but uh, okay. I believe, I'm going to yeah. Let's just pretend that I'm right. Yeah. That's the way it goes. Um, Okay, uh, so Top Gun was the top performing box office movie of 1986. Uh, what do you think it pulled in in 86 dollars? Mm. Domestic. Domestic? I mean, it's, it's, yeah. I'm going to say 175. Almost all the time when I pull these numbers, they're domestic. Yeah, I'm going to say okay. 175. 175. That was going to be my number two, but I'll say 150 just to be different. All right. Well, let's go with your first choice, and the number was one seventy six. Oh, really? Wow. One seventy six million. Allison's been on a tear of guessing lately, uh, as wow. of last night and today. Uh, only on these things where the game doesn't count. <laughs> I know. Like she, she's doing well when there's no pressure. <laughs> in the la- in the last podcast, she nailed the uh, 
the Rotten Tomato scores for the audience and the critics. Wow. Um, yeah, 175 million for Top Gun. So rounding out the top 10, uh, I love just the who's who of the 80s yeah. movies. Uh, so Top Gun, number two, Crocodile Dundee, Ugh. 116. The first one? The first one. Okay. 116 million. That, this is a knife. That movie was terrible and a phenomenon. Yeah. It took over the 80s. for yeah. It's, it's good unwatchable. Years. It's unwatchable yeah. now. It's, re- it's yeah. not great. No. That guy... Ludicrous. Uh, number three, Karate Kid Part Two, Ooh. 115 million. Good soundtrack, though. Back Style to School, was- 91 million. <laughs> Back to School was that year? Yeah. Wow, I w- would have thought it was older. Uh, number five, Aliens. Oh, nice. Million. Number six, The Color Purple, 83 yes, million. That's good. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Number seven, Star Trek Four: The wow. Voyage Home. Good one. Yeah. Uh, number eight, Ruthless People. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 71. Classic. Under 71 <laughs> yep. uh, number nine, Out of Africa. I'm robbing you. <laughs> 70 million. Uh, rounding up the top 10, Ferris Bueller's Day Off with 70 million. Wow. Huh. Top 10, 70 million. Yeah, I mean it's eighty six dollars, but still, what yeah. what is that now? One hundred and twenty? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. That's not exa- not exactly Murderer's Row, but that's that's a pretty solid year. It's pretty solid. I mean, the cost it, it the cost of making Top Gun was fifteen million, and it made one hundred and seventy six in the U.S. Wow, I, I I can't imagine it. Probably, well, I don't know what it did internationally, but I bet it didn't do that well internationally. So. Rah rah USA. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, Rotten Tomato score. Audience, what do you think the audience gave it in 1986? Or, well, I guess now. 80s. But, uh, well, um, I believe, kn- knowing what it was, I'm going to say 93. 93. Eric? I'll say 83. Ooh. And the audience score for Rotten Tomatoes for Top Gun was, or is, 83. Wow. Eric nailed ah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, the critic score for Rotten Tomatoes. 87. I'm going to say the critics liked it more. I think they're going to like... The um, camera work, the editing of the fighter scenes. I, had I not looked, I couldn't even have guessed what the critics would have put this. I don't know if they liked it or disliked it. I don't don't remember at all. I have no idea. Uh, Eric, critics. I'm going to say that the critics liked it a little bit less. Usually we're... 100% 100% wrong on this, but I think this is going to be a case where the critics liked it a little bit less. I'll say 77. So I said 87, you said 77? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The critics gave it a score of 54. Really? Right. Wow. wow. They needed it. Yeah. That, uh, that is a rotten score. Yeah, does that does that fall into the, the rotten area? I yeah, like. 60 is the cutoff. 60, yep. Uh, yeah, so I thought critics liked it a little more than that. It's clearly not a critical it, darling movie, but the, it's a popcorn movie, but still. Yeah, I would have thought they would have liked it more, not for the script, <clears throat> but for the um, the fighter scenes and stuff like that, the editing. Yeah. Well, oh, where... I wrote this down. Where is it? Where is it? Oh, I, had it. I have it in uh, trivia somewhere. Oh. Where is it? Uh, I don't have it here. Okay. But Great. Damn it. I wrote it down somewhere. I can't find it. Um, it won three Oscars. And they were for um, editing. Um, Sound. Sound mixing and sound editing. Yeah, yeah. like all, all three of those. Yeah. Yeah. So 
that's those categories are always uh won by an action movie of some type so yeah oh there it is best sound mixing best sound editing best film editing yep the original title of the film was top guns plural (laughs) yeah (laughs) fine great there's um I'm not going to go into a lot of the details of like uh, that it was based on the the fighter town, you know, the, the a real right. pilot school and all that sort of stuff. We all get it. Um, director Tony Scott's original vi- vision for the film was Apocalypse Now in an aircraft carrier. Hmm. I don't hmm. get that. Uh, he later realized it was a, a definite popcorn movie, and it was quote unquote. Uh, rock and roll stars of the sky. So he made it a little more of the Maverick, Tom Cruise, yeah. you know, type of movie. Um, the original script called for Goose. Go- Goose. Let's, let's try Goose. Goose. Uh, his death to be a result of a mid-air collision. Oh, yeah. The Navy wouldn't approve that, so they changed it to a scenario that was more plausible, <laughs> depicting an accident that actually happened uh, in real life, but that uh, didn't result in someone dying. Yeah, and to that point, I read that um, in order for them to get access to using these fighter jets, that the Pentagon um, required sign off on the script yeah. and everything to make sure that it did not in any way tarnish the the military. It did not um, decrease there's tons uh, of those stories and all of that stuff. Yeah, Kelly McGillis. Uh, the character Charlie was originally supposed to be an officer, but the Navy wouldn't approve a script involving two officers fraternizing mm. or fraternizing. Um, so they changed it. Uh, basically, but she was based off of though an actual civilian, yeah, um, person, yeah, uh, call sign legs, <laughs> <laughs> apparently. Yeah, and I guess the story uh, that the story goes that woman retired as like the deputy secretary of defense, like the highest yeah. ranking woman in the defense department Ladies. ever. Hilarious. But she used to wear heels and stockings all the time too, and like clacked around the halls, and people always knew she was coming and would be um, prepared because she, yeah, because she. I mean, she's a civilian, so you don't salute her, but. Right. Um, her he, she always had heels on and she cracked down the hallway legs so legs funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's perfect um but this obviously is essentially a recruiting propaganda film for the navy um in, in many ways I mean, yeah. it's, it's plainly obvious and the navy had to sign off on everything um and reports are that enlistment in all branches of the military including the navy but not only the navy uh, after this film uh, came out, spiked like 500%. Yeah. Uh, so they, <laughs> they actually, the Navy actually set up recruiting stations in movie yeah. theaters. Yeah, They're so catching awesome. people coming right out of the movie. It's, it's, so, uh, it's unbelievable. It's like setting up a, a, a boxing recruitment yep. you know, a gym outside of, of Rocky or something. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here. Uh, the so-called Top Gun Award, uh, for which the pilots in the film compete, does not actually exist in the Navy. Hmm. So there is no big competition for the thing. I did see at the actual facility that apparently they have a thing where you have to pay a five dollar fine if you quote anything from this movie. Yeah, which is <laughs> That's great. That's awesome. I love, it. I love that. <laughs> Uh, Val Kilmer ad-libbed the moment when he coughed the line bullshit in the hangar scene. Yep. Uh, so that's always good. We love the little ad-libs. A good ad-lib. Uh, one pilot did die in the filming of uh, yep. all the stunts. He, he was intentionally doing like a flat spin or some sort of a spin to get on a, a dash mount of the camera. Um, but the plane failed to recover he couldn't recover out of it and uh crashed into the pacific pacific ocean i i read what Um, i what when i read about that too what surprised me the most and i don't know if it's still the case but it said 
that the pl- he and the plane were never found. Like he splashed yeah. on the ocean and wow. was gone forever. Couldn't even yeah, find him. Yeah, I saw him. that too. That's th- to me. That's the craziest that's part. That seems unusual. Maybe he yeah. just flew into the Bermuda Triangle and yeah. was abducted by aliens. Could be. Uh, okay, Top Guns. I got that. Um, the famous love scene uh, was shot after filming Wrapped. I didn't realize that. Uh, that they shot all the movie was effect- effectively done. Mm-hmm. I mean, they do reshoot reshoots all the time, but this wasn't part of the main filming. Uh, plan and Kelly McGillis's hair was different at that time so she had to uh that's what I did silhouettes and all the dim lighting uh her hairdo is wrong uh in the elevator sequence with uh Tom Cruise so she wore a hat in that because they were doing you know later reshoots with you know people's hair grew out and they didn't they didn't do all the other prep uh they just said screw it we'll just hide it with uh, hats and lighting or whatever so um that's interesting I, yeah what is that movie without like how did i don't well, how do you sell that relationship without that scene well that that was i guess what the screen screening audiences were saying yeah. that kind of like what how is there no like a uh cli- climax no pun intended of you mean that, coitus <laughs> Big Lebowski. That that was that was why, and like it was filmed in like Chicago. Like they weren't even like near where the original film was yeah. um, done. They it was kind of a rush, also. Yeah. Um. Do you guys have any other trivia? I'm gonna yeah, jump into I've got, casting. I've got a couple issues. things, and then Eric, I'll let you um, say some, and then if I if you don't catch mine, then I'll um, come back. So one was the older guy at the bar that she was mm-hmm. quote unquote on a date with, or that's what um, Maverick thought um, was actually the consultant on the film whose call same call sign was viper and was kind of based on yeah that so i was gonna do i was going to put together a game that involved call signs and like yeah. made up call signs and whatever but i couldn't figure it out and i didn't want to spend all that time for yeah. it but uh, yeah um which speaking of apparently in an early version of the script Merlin's real name was supposed to be the last name was supposed to be Merlin and his call sign was going to be wizard, but they thought (laughs) it was going to (laughs) be too complicated. So it's his first name was magic. Yeah. Um, so it's just Merlin. Uh, Yeah. Unexplained. Yeah. I think one goofy name is good enough. Um, and I'll do one other piece of trivia and then one comment. So one of the things that I saw um, was that, you know, the song, uh, the Kenny Loggins song, which was just... Danger Zone? Yeah, it was just, <laughs> you know, it was the song of the movie, yeah. um, top of the charts kind of thing, but it was passed on by two other bands of that time of Toto and REO Speedwagon. <laughs> I but wonder if they recorded ver- a lot of times they will record versions of it that aren't used and that yeah. they're floating around like on the internet somewhere you can probably find them. Yeah. That happens with the Bond, the James Bond songs a lot. That could be, yeah. yeah. And then the last is something that I literally <laughs> learned finally oh. um, after decades of watching this movie and always trying to listen really closely to understand oh. the word and I've never <laughs> understood it, which is what Goose's position is called. Rear. No. Rio. No. Rio. R-E-O. Rio. R-I-O. Damn. I always thought it was rear yeah. or real. Like I rear, real. I was like, oh, they're in the like in, in the, the rear. rear, like rear yeah. view mirror kind of thing, or real, which is what I thought 
I would hear, but it didn't make sense. And it's Rio, R-I-O, Radio Intercept Officer. And so I did not know that until this afternoon while I was preparing for Did anybody this look up or, Eric, do you know, uh, what is that person? What is that job? What are you doing in that plane? Um, exactly what the acronym, uh, what do you, what do you, radio intercept? It's yeah. radio and radar. Yeah. Like it's all about like where everything is around you. Your it's communication. It's, it's finding the enemy planes. It's, it's all of that yeah, stuff. Well, I thought a lot of that was in the, the front cockpit with the pilot though. I, I don't know. I have no idea, obviously, but Yeah. I mean, granted, in the movie, all we see those guys do is look around real quickly and then say, hey, he's on your six or whatever. Right. <laughs> That's right. about it. But uh, OK, great. So that Leo. was. Yeah. And I'm so glad you you made me feel a lot better that I had. No I definitely idea. thought it was rear. I, 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 I had no question it was rear for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we've right. all learned something today, except for Eric. Eric, you do. All right, Eric, what, uh, what trivia do you have? Um, the, uh, let's see, there's the bar that they were all hanging out at, um, for the, a long time, it was an actual bar out there in California that had a lot of memorabilia from the movie on display oh, yeah. there, but then sometime, uh, I think in the late nineties or early two thousands, it, there was a grease fire in the kitchen and. <laughs> the majority of the place burned down. Later, Top Gun. Yeah. Yeah. They, some of the stuff, I think, and I want to say, I think Chrissy Ruffiner took Susan there because Chrissy lived in San Diego oh. and Susan visited yep. her and they went out there. Yeah. Um, they went to that bar and, uh, like, they still had Maverick, one of Maverick's helmets on display, but it had been damaged in the fire. So like some of like the plastic visor was warped from heat or something. Yeah. Did they play You Lost That Loving Feeling on the jukebox? <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. Or Great Balls of Fire on the piano. Yeah. Good God. Um, all right. I have uh, for a couple of casting things for before you have that, Maverick and Charlie. Um, before you do that, um, one other thing that I saw was that Meg Ryan and Anthony Edwards actually started dating after the film. <laughs> they played, you know, obviously played a married couple on the film. And I just think it's funny um, when this happens is Kelly McGillis is five foot ten. Yeah, yeah. And Tom Cruise is not. Yeah. So he had to wear like cowboy boots with a stacked heel and she couldn't wear shoes yeah. in scenes where they were face to face. Yeah. And um, so it, it's funny. So then you think about when she walks in and she's in heels, she's six one easily as she's yeah. um, going up to present um, in front of all those guys. Um, and then the last thing I saw, which was kind of interesting is that, um, scene where she's like chasing after him and I'm going to finish my sentence. Right. Um, Tom Cruise, after she like, um, like yells at him or whatever, he was supposed to say something and he forgot the line and he kisses her right. instead of the line. And the director liked it so much that right. he kept it in. Right. <laughs> yeah. The, the height thing with Kelly McGin McGillis is one thing that this is obviously before Cruz hit his peak or his... His cruisiness? His, yeah, at the peak of his powers, his zenith or whatever. Because uh, that's not happening now. It would never happen after this movie because he's greenlighting every female lead in any of his movies. That They all got to be a, right. a certain shortness, not even height. But right. like, they can't be above whatever number. And he's famous for wearing lifts and everything he's doing yeah. constantly. So uh, let me ask this question. Cause I've, it, I've heard this from a couple of people. It was not as 
obvious to me um, up until recently, I guess, of the considered age difference between Tom Cruise and Kelly McGillis. Mm -hmm. Was that like a big thing that everybody noticed and I just was completely oblivious to? Yeah. Okay. All right. That's all. <laughs> I, even seeing it in seventh grade, we were all like, oh, he, he's going for the older woman. Like, yeah, that's a, yeah. We haven't seen that before. We are, yeah. I hadn't it, whatever. But yeah, yeah. It was purposeful in the script. And it was. I know. I just. Yeah. I, I no, guess you didn't? I, I didn't really think about it. Wow. I guess. Yeah. Um, so I saw. But looking back at it, he is like a child in this movie. Like he is so yeah. young. He's 24. Yeah. And she was 29. Um, so I saw a couple different things with casting Maverick. Um, I saw the names that were either turned it down or were considered. And then there's a bunch of rumors and the rumors mm -hmm. were kind of bullshit, but I'll throw them out there anyway. But I also saw something that contradicts all of this stuff, which or, or maybe not contradicts, but is inconsistent with these other names. The idea that the role was written for Tom Cruise. Mm -hmm. I saw that somewhere. If that's the case, well, I, these other names make no sense then. Like, right. did, was it written for him and then he said no and then they just had these other backups? Or Well, what? I did see that he was pretty resistant to the role for a long time and it took... Um, basically, they, had, they convinced him to get in a plane because right. they wanted... Right. They wanted him to see what it's like because they had the actors in a lot of the planes. They just weren't in the pilot seat. They yeah. were, um, and it was the plane ride that got him to say yes. But for right. a while he was resistant. So knowing that I've got two people that supposedly turned the role down and then three people that were considered, I don't know what that means exactly <clears throat> as far as considered or not, but okay. so turned it down includes Scott Bayo and Mickey Rourke. Scott Bayo. <laughs> yep. Oh my I saw gosh. Mickey Rourke, but Scott Scott Bayo. <laughs> he was you know his career was long. Like <laughs> his career was long dead by then, wasn't it? Or he was he was neck deep in Charles in charge. Eighty six, so maybe shooting in eighty five mm -hmm. is probably even before Charles in charge, right? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I saw that those guys turned it down. And then the three I saw that were considered in some way included Matthew Modine, Charlie Sheen, and John Travolta. Yeah. To what degree they were considered, yeah. who the hell knows. But, yeah. you know. I think, I think I saw the John Travolta, and he might have been too expensive. And he, well, he, I don't think he was. I think it was, he, it was that downtime where he wasn't, a factor. He wasn't a movie mm. star. He wasn't anything. He was barely working yeah, at that maybe, point. Maybe I'm, con I'm confusing him with something else. That could be. Um, and I'll give you the, the, list of, the list of rumors. I'm still reeling from that one. The list of rumors that I saw. And I think they are all bullshit. Okay. Um, some don't even work with the timeline of their careers or ages or any... Uh, and, these are nonsense, but I'll throw them out anyway. Mm -hmm. So get ready to not be impressed. Okay. Uh, Tom Hanks. For Maverick. Maverick? All this is Maverick. So that's just the first of the stupidity. So just get ready. Tom Hanks. Jim Carrey. J was Jim Carrey even a thing? Yet? I don't that, think so. When was In Living Color? Uh, not then. Uh, Patrick Swayze. Oh. Rob uh. Lowe. I could see Rob, Rob Lowe. Lowe, maybe Sean Penn, mm. Emilio Estevez, maybe Michael J. Fox. <laughs> right. I don't like so it many is of these. Feeling the need for speed, but you stop at eighty-eight miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, your plane won't take off, dude. <laughs> just go in the water. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. <clears throat> need roads where they're going. No, you definitely don't need roads. Um, okay, so I, here's one, two, three, four. St I'm st Scott Bayo has still got me as a... Uh, Mickey Rourke! <laughs> okay. 
uh, one, two, three, four people supposedly turned down the role of Charlie. Okay. Before it was given to uh, McGillis. Um, and that was Linda Fiorentino. Yep, I saw that. Tatum O'Neill. Uh, Ali Sheedy. And Brooke Shields. I also saw Deborah Winger. I saw Deborah Winger is under my list of considered. Uh uh-uh. That she may not have had a chance to turn it down or not, but she was considered. She could actually work in that role too. Um, I don't know that I love any of those in there. I don't. I don't love no. Kelly McG- McGillis in this role either. But uh, whatever. Um, anybody but see the anything age else? gap though of twenty nine and twenty four? That's not that significant. No. But she, I guess, portrayed somebody I was a lot older. Say, I thought she looked older than twenty nine. Um okay. I have one other yep. I have one other character who I saw as a Whoa. potential cast. I didn't see any other casting stuff. So. Um I don't know if it was considered or offered and declined. I think it was offered and declined was John Voigt for Viper. John Voigt. I can't believe he declined it. Maybe it was a uh uh scheduling issue or something. Know. Yeah. Because he, he's, he would jump. He would love to be in a, a military movie like that. I'm sure. Yeah. He's that kind of guy. <laughs> uh, okay, <laughs> let's do recasturbate. All right. Better close the door. It's time to recasturbate. You ready, Eric? I'm ready. <laughs> Um, should we start at the top with Maverick? Uh, this is this is your game show, man. I know. I don't like any of my names though. Uh let's start with Tom Cruise Maverick. All right. Uh I have two people. I don't know that I like them, but I'm gonna throw them out there. One is Ty Sheridan. Okay. Who is the guy from Red Ready Player One? We just watched yep. part of it yesterday. Yep. And uh whatever other movies and i think my number one the only other guy i have is taron egerton oh i he's on my list he's my maverick i think yeah the end of list i I don't have anybody else so all all i was thinking about when i was thinking about this character is who's gonna pull off an ego that is so big so i had um Taryn Edgerton. And I, I I was constrained by the age, too. I was trying to yeah. shoot for 24, 25. Yeah. Um, he's probably a little bit too old, but I have Dave Franco. <laughs> um, yeah, and then bad. number one, I thought, was Michael B. Jordan. I am somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for me, the hook would... I ended up casting this movie a little bit older than what they did originally because I know having guys that young in that school is a hundred percent bullshit. Like that school is not meant first of all, there's not pilots that young. And second of yeah. all, pilots that young aren't going to that school. So I'm glad you said that because when we were watching it, I had questions about it too. Like, <laughs> Like what? <laughs> how do they? How does that work? Yeah, yeah. It's so I, I, I'm still on the young side, but definitely not that young. Um, yeah. But my, I had a couple of choices for Maverick. Uh, Michael B. Jordan is pretty much my number one, and yep. then the other name that I had was Scott Eastwood. Oh, I have him somewhere else. Yeah. I considered him, but then I, I didn't. All right. Um, I'll go first for Goose as well, because I only have one name. Okay. Wow. Uh, just for the sake of ages, let, I'm going to run down the age roster of the top five characters. Uh, Matt, Tom Cruise was 24. Martin Anthony Wayne. Edwards, 24. Kelly McGillis, 29. Tom Skerritt, 53, Val Kilmer, 27. So that's okay. the ranges we're sort of uh, right. theoretically shooting for. Uh, so my goose, 
I didn't know where to go with this guy. And I had a hard time casting this entire movie. I don't know what my deal was, but um, my only guy was Miles Teller for Goose. Hmm. That's it. All right. I don't, I don't feel even good about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I I didn't realize it at the time, but looking back on it, the casting of Top Gun Maverick has severely affected my recasting of Top Gun. We'll touch on more yeah. on that later, but <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, Miles Teller plays Goose's son in Maverick, so. Oh, oh, the casting of the new movie coming out is, is affecting oh. your recasting yes. of the old movie got yes. it got it got it right <laughs> all right al what do you got I, oh did so eric did you give oh. your goose um i have not i had a couple of names one name that i threw out there because i i really he's i think he's he's definitely too old compared to even what getting back to my other conversation from, from before but um I like this actor and I kind of, I would want him to be, if I was casting this movie, I'd want to put him in there somewhere. Uh, Randall Park. Who's that? He plays, um, he plays, <laughs> he plays uh, agent Wu in the Marvel cinematic universe. Like he's in WandaVision and. Oh yeah. In, uh, yeah. Like, oh, I like him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would just want him in this movie somewhere. Yeah. Um, but other names that I had, uh, Ezra Miller was one I name that him. I had. Yep. Yeah. And then I think I would go with, uh, Donald Glover. Mm, I've got him somewhere else. We were just talking about him cause, uh, the Martian was on and this is the problem I always had with him when we do these recasting things. I always want to include him for these roles where the, the, the previous actor or the role is played by a 25 year old, a 26 year old. I'm like, Oh, uh, Donald Glover. He, that, that's my guy. And then I look and Donald Glover's 37 years old or whatever yeah. he is. I'm like, ah, oh, he's too old for it. Yeah. He can certainly play younger. I mean, like, no problem there, but uh, I always get caught up in the age factor with all these. Yeah. Especially with him. So um, I had Ezra Miller also for goose. I then also had Nick Robinson. What he was in uh, Love Simon. He was just in that show, Teacher. Or the oh Teacher. yeah. <clears throat> um, but the number one person I have in this role is Brie Larson. I think you change it up, <laughs> and it's a woman. Okay. See, I, that changes I'm, a lot of things I, in this movie. I know, but I kind of like it. I, I don't think you're making this movie now. You're not going to have a zero female. You'll have one. And I like that. It's going to be Mavericks Rio. <laughs> Rio. <laughs> yeah. I considered making that move, but I thought it, it affected too many parts of the movie. So I didn't do it. Yeah. Um, all right. I had one other like backup, um, Logan Lerman, who was Percy who Jackson. Is. Oh, and also in uh, what's the Nazi Hunter, the Hunters, or whatever it is on uh, Prime. Oh, that yeah, with the um, um, Pacino, yeah, as the the Jew killer or the the Jewish wow. Nazi killer. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That show kind of sucks. Um, okay, Charlie Kelly McGillis, uh, or you know, originally played by Kelly McGillis. I did not like her in this movie. I never did. Um, I think I don't know who they would have had to play her, but I thought always thought she was supposedly else. there was not very good chemistry on set with uh, her and Tom Cruise. Ugh. Like they really just did not. To get me, along. it shows. Like, yeah. it's. it's it's hard to believe a big movie like this, as successful as it was with big stars or big enough at the time, big budget, all that stuff, that didn't get this chemistry right. I don't yeah. know. I mean, it, it did perfectly fine. Who cares? But whatever. Uh, okay. I have, I have four for this one. Ooh. 
my throwaway one is Brie Larson. I would have had her in there, yeah. maybe. Um, I have three that I like almost equally. Um, Tessa Thompson. Yep, I have her on my list. I thought that'd be good, Charlie. Almost, I mean, she, this person we talked about yesterday is our default for a lot of these roles. Jennifer Lawrence. Yep, she's also on my list. I think my number one is someone who I don't know if she's acting anymore. Hmm. I think she's might exclusively be a director. And I put in Greta Gerwig as Uh-oh. my Charlie. I think that would work. Interesting. Okay. Although, honestly, she also could have fit my Meg Ryan role, too. Yeah. I didn't put her there. Well, since you picked two of my three, <laughs> um, my third one that I had was Emma Stone. Yeah. I never know what to do with her. I, I like Tessa Thompson a lot in that yeah, role. Yeah. She is Jennifer my choice, Lawrence too. Jennifer Lawrence is, like, recasting too, um, is too, uh, Kelly McGillis. Yeah. I think that's probably about right. Yeah. I only had two names, and they were both said. Uh, Brie Larson, which I didn't wasn't too excited about, but... Tessa yep. Thompson, I thought, would be really good. Wow. All three of us. We're on the same page on that one. By default, I think Tessa wins that one. Wow. All right. I've got <laughs> Viper. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I've got three for Viper. Uh, yeah, I have three for Viper. Um, in a, a bit of stunt casting, I'm – putting Tom Cruise as Viper because he is now of the age. Yeah. (laughs) So let's do that. Uh, I got a possibility of Billy Crudup as Viper. Mm, That's a good one. And then I think one, this guy I think just fits in a military movie. Um, And because of his age, he fits as as Viper. Um, I think it's Josh Brolin. I think he could do it. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. I've oh. only really got two. Um, and they might be a little bit young for the role. Scarrett was 53. so Yeah, I've but, got people in their 40s yeah. for this role. We always say like within three to five years, you're probably fine. Um, I've got John Krasinski. <laughs> I think he's too young, but that's good. Um, And then the other who I feel like could play a 53-year-old. Wow. Um, is Luke Hemsworth. Hmm. From Westworld, Westworld. right? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. I think he's... How old is he? I have no idea, but he's in his 40s. Yeah, but is he like 42 or something? I don't, dude. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm just, no, I'm just I'm telling you. I, I think I, I, don't know. I went a little too young with I this know. one. That's the one I'm pushing back on. I think he's... I think he's closer to being a pilot than he is uh, the old dog. He's 40. Oh. He looks old, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Eric. Who's your Tom Scarrett? Oh, we did that already, right? No, I, I have not gone yet. Um, you, you did Charlie for him. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I've got I, – I, I struggled with this one a little bit. I was – um, I was trying to think of actors that have said more of like a laid back sort of quiet manner about them for the most part. And I came up with like, like a couple, couples actors more, a little bit more on the younger side and the couple a little bit more on, on the much older side. Mm. Um, my younger two actors, uh, this might be too young, Oscar Isaac. And then mm. again, Maverick influencing my uh, Top Gun casting. I got John Hamm. He is in Top Gun Maverick. Uh, um, is he? Yeah, he's in it. Um, and then the older actors that I thought of were um, Kurt Russell or oh. Denzel Washington. I've got Denzel somewhere else. That's. I like both of those guys. Yes, they're older, but... Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, Kurt Russell, I like that. Uh, Okay, Iceman. Um, I have three, and 
two of the names have already been said elsewhere. Okay. My number three, it would be Ezra Miller as Iceman. Number hmm. two, Ansel Elgort from Baby Driver. Yep. Uh, which actually, now that I'm thinking about it, he could have been a goose as well. He could have done a goose. Uh, and this is where I had Michael B. Jordan as Ice Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's good. Uh, that's where the attitude, good. the confidence, the, you know, yeah. that whole deal. Yep. Al? Um, I actually had four here. Um, I had Taylor Lautner from Twilight. Say, <laughs> so where, where's he been? <laughs> <laughs> um he was he's my last choice then i have um i have him somewhere I, else wow a double uh, taylor Wonder. <laughs> yeah. scott eastwood is where i have mm-hmm. um jor um I, i'm gonna say army hammer i love casting army hammer i don't know if, he, if he's going to be in anything for a while he might just need to go underground for a bit but Army Hammer, I feel like, would be good for this role. I think he is, too. Uh, is he too old? I don't know. Um, is he 40? I, I have I have him for Iceman I also. Yeah, I think, he's, I think he works, but I think he's... Yeah. I, got, I got distracted by the age again. The, the one that I like um, in this role is... His name is George McKay. He was in Captain Fantastic. He was a lead role mm-hmm. in 1917. Mm-hmm. Like, I, like I, I, think, I think he could play, like, that stoic, kind of um, by-the-book, disciplined yeah. person. Yeah. Eric? Uh, I only had two names for Iceman. Army Hammer was one of them. Uh, Chris Evans is the other. Oh. Mm. Again, yeah. sort of the... Uh, like I like I, I'm skewing older, but again, sort of the by the book kind of guy. It's kind of I guess falls into his Captain America character a little bit, as far as yeah. being by the book and straight as an arrow kind of thing. But yeah, they are what they are. I, I'm not, I wasn't. I also had a hard time casting a lot of these, and yeah, Ice Band was no different. There. All right. So we're getting down into the wild card area where you can pick and choose people. I mean, we have, I guess, a few key people to cast, but they're not really consequential characters necessarily. I mean, we've got things like Meg Ryan's Carol. Uh, We've got Jester. We've got Stinger, the bald guy. Uh, We've got Slider. Uh, Yep. Played by Rick Rosovich, who is, uh, we all know from this movie and Roxanne and the guy, who, the first guy who fights Schwarzenegger in The Terminator. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's his triple whammy. And then yep. he's done whatever he's done, but yep. uh, those ones that I know him from. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Jester first. Okay. Uh, Cause I think we can cast him out we can consider we can give some options on him uh so and wasn't michael ironside pretty young michael ironside i looked this up specifically because he's one of those guys yeah uh he was 36 yeah right. he looks insane. 52. It's insane yeah and apparently he played military so well that um as he was walking down the hallway at the base guys like stopped and saluted him like they didn't know who he was he's played a military guy (laughs) in 92 percent of his roles i'm sure yeah i mean it's crazy but yeah he is 36 and looks 56 yeah um he looked he looked the same in 1986 as he did in 2006 like he didn't change yeah uh it's crazy uh, anyway, so for Jester, I have three. Uh, stunt casting with Tom Hardy uh-huh. as my Jester. <laughs> uh, yeah. But in reality, I would go either Idris Elba or Liev Schreiber. I think Idris Elba might be the winner in the clubhouse, but I do like Liev in that one. Yeah. Uh, 
one too. Yeah. So I stuck more with the age of Jester, um, knowing that he was younger, kind of thinking about he is not at Viper's level. Like right. he's like a relatively new instructor. But that's the kicker thing. Do you go with his actual age or the age yeah. he looks on film? I don't right. know. <laughs> so this is where I had Donald Glover. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also have uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Yeah. That's a good one. I like that one. Um, from last, we were watching a movie last night. I put Jamie Dornan, Dornan in here. <laughs> yeah. But the one that I, I am now all about casting is Adam Driver. Fucking hell. <laughs> we can't hear you, Eric. Eric, you're... Tensi- There's a certain amount of intensity that comes with Jester. So yep. I have Tom Hardy and Adam Driver. And I also threw in uh, Michael Shannon. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I always like to put in Michael Shannon. And that's where I would put him. You can hear him say, I don't know. I just don't know. Like, <laughs> hear Michael Shannon's voice saying that line. One of the yeah. funny things, wasn't uh, Tim Robbins, uh, was he Merlin? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Tim Robbins is 6'5". Yep. Uh, no one 6'5 is getting in one of those jets. Right. Yeah, he's... Yeah. He was knees to chest the whole way if that was if he was actually yeah. in there. So not that it matters in any of this stuff, but casting someone like Army Hammer. Oh, I, I definitely thought about that. Idris Elba. Yep. Or any of these 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 tall guys. Like it's great. It works on film, but right. it's insanity. These guys right. are not enrolling in the Navy. Right. It was needs to be a fighter pilot. Uh okay. Let's try and run through these quickly. If possible, okay. uh, I got one name and one name only for Commander Tom Stinger Jordan. Okay. Uh, he was played by James Tolkien, who was 55 at the time. Uh-huh. Again, the guy who's been bald for his entire life, so I right. don't know how old he actually is. Uh, I had Jason Statham. The oh. Um, <laughs> 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 if he can pull an American accent, he's got it. Uh-huh. Great. I have one name for Stinger also. Uh, J.K. Simmons. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's a good one. I like him, again, for a lot of these things. I, just, I get pigeonholed by the, the age. You know, he, yeah. he's 67 or something like that. So. But it's all right. So I, I, had, I had three, of course. Um, going straight about uh, having a bald guy playing the part mm-hmm. and... Who would deliver the line? Um, you'll be flying a cargo plane full of rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. I put Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Another guy who couldn't fit on an aircraft right. carrier. <laughs> <laughs> but my other two characters that are much more real choices <laughs> one is Carl Urban, who is in The Boys. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then I have Denzel as my number yeah. one. Yeah, that's solid. Uh okay, Meg Ryan's character Carol. Yep. Uh, I have two. I don't know if one of them works, and I think the other one is even iffy at best. Yeah. Uh, so the first one, my, or my backup, is Zendaya oh. as uh uh-huh. Goose's wife, and my number one, I guess, is Margaret. Quayley. I don't know who that is. She uh, was is. a dark-headed girl in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood uh, that Brad oh, Pitt yeah. is sitting on. Yeah, uh, with the pickles. Uh, Annie McDowell's daughter. Yeah. yeah, that's carrying the pickle jar. Yeah. yeah. I got nothing. That, that's it. Yeah. That's as far as I can go with this one. For, so I, I had, oh, go, go ahead, Eric. You can go Eric, ahead. Eric, you do it. All right. I got a couple of names, and the only... Uh, Casting this, I was thinking of who had, like, delivering the line, uh, who could just say it in that, like, super loud, sort of almost annoying way of, yeah. so, Maverick, 
Who yeah. tells me you're in love with one of your instructors? Somebody just, yeah. no filter whatsoever. I came up with a couple of names. Uh, Aquafina. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, my other one is uh, Melissa Villasenor. Oh. oh, that's a good one. That's pretty good. <laughs> I like that a lot. I was trying to think of someone who had that big personality or could play that big personality, be that loud, obnoxious, uh, slightly Southern, even a uh, character that Meg Ryan plays. Yeah. And I couldn't think of any. So I, I was yeah. drawing a blank at all of that stuff. So um, one is, I guess, maybe more, her build than anything else <laughs> um just being real slight um is uh Letitia Wright okay. from uh, Black Panther the uh-huh. younger sister yeah 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 I then have Lily James as Carol uh-huh. and then my number one is Brenda Song who plays mm. the girlfriend in the social network who yeah <laughs> yeah wow yeah that could work just a bit nutty she's over the top yeah. or she can play it at least yeah yeah all right last wild card one that i have is it's slider yeah i mean he was 29 at the time the, the, the rick rossovich yeah. the, the actor uh i couldn't think of anyone that I like to put in there. So I said Chris Hemsworth, but younger. Uh, that's yeah. all I got. At yeah. The end. I had Liam Hemsworth, but I don't think he <laughs> could play it. Um, <laughs> I love that we pulled that. I know. We had this is Hemsworth. where I had Taylor Lautner. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's, was, that's it. the right I one, just I think. Th- yeah, I was just thinking the biggest meatheads I could think of. Yeah. yeah. And Taylor Lautner was one. Zach Efron was another. Yeah, he's too old. And again, probably too old, but Channing Tatum. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a good meathead. Yeah, I had um, the other one I had, two I had was Alexander Ludwig, who was in the Hunger Games. Huh? Um, he plays one of the champ, like the from. Um, uh, Is he from Lever- Rip- he was like one of the champions or whatever. Anyway, if you saw the movie, you would know. And then um, the one only because of volleyball scene, and I will watch him without a shirt on <laughs> any day of the week, is Alexander Sarsgaard. <laughs> He's too old. Too. He's way too old, but He's I'll still like watch 40. him play volleyball <laughs> without a shirt on. <laughs> Hilarious. All right. Uh, Memorable scenes and quotable lines. I do have, I'll, um, oh, I got go one ahead. more wild card just because I got to put him somewhere. I decided um, where I would put Charlie Day in this movie <laughs> is he would be the air boss that's drinking his coffee during the yeah. flyby. <laughs> <laughs> I want some butts. Yeah. Yeah. That would be good. <laughs> fly by <laughs> coffee drinker um, okay quotes so I was putting t- this list together and there's a few things here and there there's only really a couple two three I don't know um, like legit quotes that come out of this movie there's lines here and there that we you know but they don't stand out as the quote from the movie or the most memorable handful right okay i think the number one is i feel the need the need for speed yep. right the end right i there. think it's like top 100 movie quote or yeah. something like that yeah yeah i feel the need the need for speed Ow! and some of these i didn't write them down verbatim but uh uh when they talk about uh it was international relations i flipped in the bird yeah yeah Communicating, keeping up foreign relations. I was, you know, giving him the bird. You know, the finger. Yes, I know the finger, Goose. I'm, I'm sorry, I hate it when it does that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me.
that one. Uh, when Stringer, Stringer, Stinger says, uh, son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. Yep. Uh, okay, fine. Um, you can be my wingman anytime. You can be my wingman anytime. Bullshit. You can be mine. Yeah. Uh, take me to bed or lose me forever. Yeah, that was a big one. Hey, Goose, you big stick! That's me, honey. Take me to bed or lose me forever. Show me the way home, honey. Uh, she's lost that loving feeling of all the... No, she it's hasn't. Not, it's not the quote necessarily, it's the song. Yeah. She's lost that loving feeling. She's like... No, she hasn't. Yes, she, she has. She has not lost that look. Because she's lost it, Matt. Come on. I hate it when she does that. Uh, so I didn't have a lot right there. I mean, it was... It's... I feel the need, the need for speed. Yeah. Done and done. Yeah. There's a... with Penny Benjamin... <laughs> <laughs> the uh does the uh the Val Kilmer's uh gum chomp in the locker room yeah. does that count as a quote? I know. <laughs> I watched that scene over because I thought I thought he said something that jumped out and he doesn't really say much there. He's like uh, he just says, You're you know, I don't want to be up there with you, you're dangerous. And then Tom Cruise snaps at him. That's you're right. I am dangerous. So yeah, uh this big movie we all know and it's it holds a a significant place in a lot of people's minds or lives, not super quotable. I mean, you, but I feel like I could say the dialogue of this entire movie just about. I definitely couldn't. That's for sure. I, I uh, pretty much could too. <laughs> well, but you guys could do the same thing with Gus as well. Right. So, I mean, let's put Don't that in perspective. Knock it. Or the Muppet Caper. Okay, you're getting you're <laughs> treading on dangerous territory here. You're trying to mock uh, a little bit. Would this movie work today? Uh, We're gonna find out I in think, about six months, right? I think the answer <laughs> is it would definitely get made. I don't yeah. know if it get, you know it work or not. I mean, it it if this were a brand new movie, like it's not a remake. I think, of course, it would work again. Yeah. It, it's not gonna be. Um, as as you said, it meat heady as it is now. Well, I don't think one but. of the things I th- noticed watching it again was I remember it you know, in my memory. It's there's it's more focused on the flying and dog fighting and training than it actually is. It's not. I mean, there, there's obviously those shots are great and there's a good handful in there, but it's not really a fighter jet movie necessarily it's it's more about the other stuff and i think if they made it today it would be all about the fighter jet stuff not all but yeah. it, 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 would, it would lean further into it than the old one does so one of the things i did see that um i, I don't know if it's like trivia oriented or not but to kind of Apparently, this was a fairly accurate portrayal of of some of the kind of the attitude. It it you weren't supposed to be as um, oh, what's the word? Just so egotistical about it. You weren't supposed to be so prideful, but there was just a high level of of cockiness and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, that apparently one at one Christmas. The instructors at, I'm reading this now, the instructors at Top Gun sent a group photograph to their counterparts at the Soviet Air Force, along with a greeting, quote, thinking of you and yours at this joyful Yuletide season, trust all is well and cozy at your fireside. If our nations ever pair off in war, check your six o'clock, we'll be there hosing you. Signed, Top Gun. (laughs) That sounds so right. this, I mean, because the 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 movie was the Migs are supposed to be yeah. obviously the Soviets. Um, this was like the peak of the Cold War yeah. kind of thing, and so Eric, we have to talk about this. We when this when we were watching this, we were discussing it uh, at the end when those when the Migs like come into or. or uh, are threatening U.S. airspace, or at least they're they're uh, coming toward the 
carrier and then you know uh, tom cruise and Iceman and whatever go up there and like this would be an international incident that would cause a war like this would be a you know a fighter a u.s fighter jet was shot down by a russian f- fighter pilot yeah, yeah. Uh, it would be world war three like this is played off as like it's almost like yeah. this happens every other week. Well, and and we shot down four. Like the right. United States shoots down four of right. theirs. So over international it, waters yeah. or wherever. But uh, yeah. uh, the way it is portrayed, it feels like it's almost it's it's one peg above a training exercise. Almost like they take it seriously, but no one's freaking out about it. <laughs> it feels like in the way that they should be in that. Uh, at the tail end of this, nuclear weapons will be launched, and this will be World War III. I, I don't know. It, it, it caught me weird when we were watching it. Like it, it, it right? Well, and it was to war. it was a, um, a, a like it the, the ship broke down or something like that. Isn't that what it was? Where it, like yeah. it broke down and it like drifted into um, their yeah. airspace or water yeah. space or whatever i don't i don't know how that would play out today theoretically yeah. that well, it i i don't i don't know i know is, that, I think, is that the is that the trojan horse <laughs> strategy or do you, is there some, I know. A, an expected kind of rules of engagement of if you're if you're ship breaks down and you drift off into somebody's water like are you gonna blow them out of the water like I know. is that what's happening exactly like i don't know the whole thing seemed like a hollywood script all right eric <laughs> as our military consultant for the podcast what would you say about this yeah yeah it uh, would it definitely would have been a bigger i feel like it would have been a bigger deal if this had actually happened yeah they just sort of play it off um, just saying. Well, the other the other side denies the incident, right? But, the end. <laughs> yeah, but and especially well in this day and age, there's no covering that up. Yeah, yeah. There also wouldn't be a Polaroid taken. It would have been a cell phone and a tweet. Well, that yeah. was yeah. That was <laughs> in the first one. Yeah. Um, Selfie. <laughs> yeah, and. I, I mean, the whole thing just seems ludicrous, but whatever, man. Right. Um, Okay. What would you want to see in a sequel if there isn't one already? As we know, one is coming. Uh, I haven't even considered the sequel since I saw the trailer a year ago in the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't even know what it's really about other than Maverick is back. I don't know if he's a, an instructor that's being put into service. I don't know what's going on there, but putting that to the, putting the actual sequel aside, what would you want to see in a sequel or a prequel? Or would you not? Is the story done? Is it, I, we, I, I felt it reached its natural conclusion. Up. Yeah. I mean, Check I guess change. the more, if there is an interesting one, it would have been, about Duke Mitchell and right, right. and Viper, right. but I, 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 didn't, I don't feel like that's a story that needs to be told. Do either. we want to see if the Top Gun guys can uh, make the finals of the San Diego volleyball tournament? Right. <laughs> the inter-military volleyball finals? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think there's any yeah. follow-up there. Eric, what do you think? Yeah, I never gave a sequel any serious no. thoughts. No. And it was Yeah, it's it would have just been Yeah, it just been more of the same and yeah. I don't know. The sequel is Maverick becomes a NASCAR driver and the movie is called Days of Thunder. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Time for the game show that is sweeping the nation, the How Much Are They Worth game. And now, let's play the How Much Are They Worth game. 
Some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> the people I have on the list. Okay. Uh, I don't think I checked all of these on the site, but uh, we'll see in real time. They should all be there. Okay. Kelly McGillis, Tom Skerritt, Val Kilmer, Meg Ryan, Tom Cruise. Um, okay. So let's start with Kelly McGillis. I'm going to assume she's down toward the bottom of this list. Nick Gillis. Okay, she was in this. She was in the Harrison Ford movie. What is it? Is it Presumed Innocent? Witness. 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 Right. Right. Which she is what got her movie. this role. Yeah. Basically. Uh, she was the other female lead in that. Uh, the Accused. The accused, that's what, yeah, the other one, mm. Jodie Foster's other yeah. Oscar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know um, she played She played Mrs. Robinson in The Graduate on Broadway for a good stretch. Hmm. Well, I have a number. I have written one down too, and I'd feel bad if it's right, but I don't think I'm going to change it. We had some weird numbers at the the Silence yeah. of the Lambs podcast. So, yeah, I have a number. A TV show. All right, Eric, what do you have? Two million. I had three. I have five. Wow, I can't believe I'm the high one on this one. <laughs> Uh, okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Kelly McGillis has a net worth of $4 million, Ooh. which means I win because I did under. the under. Yep. I'm, glad I, was right. I'm glad I was wrong. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, Tom Skerritt, a.k.a. Piper. He has done a lot. Yeah. Um, E. Contact. Alien. (laughs) I forgot about, I forgot about uh, contact. He's in space camp. (laughs) Oh, yes, he was. Singles. Did that cameo in singles? Oh yeah. He was on uh what was the show? He was on a show for uh Picket Fences, right? Mm. Oh yeah. All right, Viper. I'm gonna give you Eric, do you have a number? I have a number. I have a number. I Al, a number. what's your number? 20. I said 25. I also have 20. Oh, my God. We are too close. Okay. Tommy Scarrett. Cheech and Chong up in smoke he was in. <laughs> uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay. Tom Scarrett has a net worth of, according to this website, again, uh, celebritynetworth.com uh, 8 million wow hmm. Eric gets it by default but we are all way off Wait, Eric and I have the same number oh you both had 20 I can read my writing uh, you both get it um, 8 million Tom mm-hmm. Skerritt there's got to be a couple divorces on there or something yeah we ran into this yesterday with one or two people and we have to remember that this is this website who knows the accuracy or even you know even ballpark i i don't know uh he has had multiple spouses he has been married three times well that might do it five children all right uh, v- Valiant Kilmer. <sighs> I know money. his name's not Valiant, but to me it is. 
Top yeah, secret real, money. Real genius, top secret, the saint. I mean, come on. Batman. The Doors. Doors got Batman money. Ghost in the Darkness money. Heat. He's heat. Oh my God, <laughs> Heat. <laughs> Tombstone. Willow money. Tombstone. Oh. The Island of Dr. Moreau. Wow. MacGruber. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> He's got that MacGruber money. <laughs> I don't know about this guy. This could be anything. I know. Did he just flake out? Is that the deal with him? He had some health issues. He, he had throat, throat cancer. cancer. Oh. That's going to happen. It, bl- it, I was, when I saw that he was going to be in the sequel, I was shocked because yeah. his, yeah, his health was really bad for a good stretch there. Well, how okay, so how much of his fortune <laughs> did his health affect it? I'm going to hope he had insurance. I, I know, but... Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm, making, it definitely I'm making a quick change. Affected his employment for a while, right? I'm going back to my original. Um... Oh shit, I've been way off. Val. Val. I'm gonna go. Okay, I have a number. Do you have a, are you do you have a number, Eric? Adam? Yeah, I got a number. All right, I'll start. I've got him at because he has he's sort of He's had health issues and has evaporated from the scene over the past decade. Uh, I don't know what to do with him, so I put him at twenty nine million. Okay. I've got twenty. Mm. I I have forty. Mm. Forty. Val Kilmer is an actor who has a net worth of twenty five million. Ah. O'Neill gets it. Which one? You? Yep. Dang it. I was four away. You were five away. Two to one to one. Oh, it's coming down to it. All right. Meg Ryan. Oh. Meg. There is what she's at and where she should be. She's made a lot of movies and a lot of big movies. Yeah. And a lot of them, she was the star or had near second billing. Hmm. But then has had nothing for 20 years. The last movie I remember her in was when she was like a, a boxing coach of some sort. She was, and then married to Dennis Quaid. Oh, right. (laughs) Right, right. Threw that away for Russell Crowe for like a month. And then was with John Mellencamp. Good Lord. Uh, Is she still with him? No clue. I never heard about Mellencamp. Yeah. Yeah. I have a number. (laughs) Um, I've written down a number. I want to be wrong, but I'm considering the fact that she's a I think she's a underpaid woman in Hollywood. Is that a lot of her movies were before? All right, I'm changing it. No. I have a new number. Mm -hmm. Eric, do you have a number? Yeah, but this is a complete shot in the dark. I have no idea. All right. Tell it. 35. Mm. I said 54. Oh, my God. I have 75. I crossed out 74. 
It made it 54. I think you guys are going to be closer than I am. Meg Ryan has a net worth of 85 million. She should be over a hundred million at this point, but I hedged my bet. So, all right, that's good. 85. Good. She found success primarily in romantic comedies, pumping out hits that frequently paid Meg 10 to 15 million per film that at times made her the highest paid actress in the world. Blah, 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 whatever. So, uh, usually list names, but that's good. Okay, uh, so Al gets that. So, so now we got the juggernaut. Two to two with Tom Cruise on deck. Do we think, do we know if Tom Cruise is his real name? It's not his real name. Yeah, there's no way. It's oh like, it's not Meriwether, but it's something oh. close to that. Well, we'll look it up in a minute. Mission Impossible 7 is coming out this year. <laughs> Dear Lord. They were, this shooting, number they were supposed to shoot anywhere. 7 and 8 back to back. Wow. But I think COVID, uh, it was a combination of delay. For, it was just announced that eight was shooting 8 was delayed because they had to do, it was delayed because of COVID, and then he's got to promote Maverick that they are putting off eight, but they were going to shoot back to back. Oh my God. This, this number... could be a Scorsese. I know. I know. By one of us. Uh... All right. I've written down a number and I'm not changing it. I have a, a ludicrous number. I have a ludicrous down. number too. I have a number. Okay, uh, I'll go first because why not? Um, I have Tom Cruise at 651. <laughs> I know. I, I may have Scorsese myself. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I have 400. I have 500. Ugh. I'm going to lose this one. Tom Cruise has a net worth of 600 million. Wow. So I get it. Wow. But wow. You won. I won. It's, it's been a while. I haven't won probably the last five we've done. Wow. Wow. $600 million. That's a lot. I would have thought he would have given more money to Scientology. No way. Um, He's done. A, I think he's got a fair amount of like producer credits oh, and all yeah, of that sort of stuff too. That. Um, he has back end on all these movies, especially in the past twenty five years. Mm-hmm. Six hundred, according to this website, which could be low. <laughs> all right, uh, Top Gun. Final thoughts. Um, I it watching it again. I don't think it held up as well as I thought it would. Um, I don't think it's as good this time around as maybe seeing it fifteen years ago, twenty years ago. Well, the the one thing that we didn't really talk about was the soundtrack, and the soundtrack <laughs> to yeah. me is as memorable as the movie um all of the music from that the star of the movie is kenny loggins kenny loggins it, but Cruise it was also movie. great balls of fire and yeah. um what's the love song yeah the uh doobie doobie brothers yeah whatever you've lost your loving feeling yeah you've or is that, that the, loving the, the isley brothers uh, I don't know. <laughs> who cares it doesn't matter Whatever dopey group. Yeah, no, I mean, the soundtrack is huge. It was everywhere for a while. Um, But yeah, watching it, I didn't, uh, it didn't catch me. I don't, I don't think it holds up all that well. It's fine, but it's not, 
the well, juggernaut. The, di- the dialogue's a little hokier than yeah. what you remember. Yeah. It's it I think what was so big about it, quite honestly, was the editing and the filming of the fighter scenes, which like you never saw that before. Everything was at a distance or it was super like I don't know if we've in the cockpit even seen it since. I mean a lot of the stuff we see now is gonna be CG or right. whatever, but uh some of those scenes, I mean, it's funny because some some of the fighter pilot, the fighter dogfight stuff, um, you see a scene and then you see the exact same scene five minutes later because they just show it again because yeah. it was cool. Um, but some of those maneuvers and the, the way they shot it were crazy. Yeah. They're, like, they're, they're, they're really good. But uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I I was lukewarm about this movie this this past time seeing it. Well, I thought the volleyball scene <laughs> held up just fine. I felt it was much better than lukewarm. Eric, what'd you think of Top Gun? What's your final assessment? You're on mute. Oh, sorry about that. I don't. I have no idea. Eric, what you're on mute. Um, um, when I, I sort of watched it through like my eleven year old eyes watching it this time. There you are. And I was just, I'll admit, I was beaming <laughs> watching it because I was remembering how much I loved it when I was a kid. Yeah. But yeah, I I totally agree that it is by no means a. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's nothing more than just yeah. like a popcorn kind of movie. Yeah. I mean, some of the movies we've done recently on the podcast here um, definitely hold up, you know, equal to, or I don't know, maybe even better uh, in hindsight than um, you know, the first time we saw him, this is not one of them. I don't think, I, in my opinion, it doesn't quite so one, one last, you know, whatever, thought whatever I, I thought of it before, I think it would have been, been, maybe this know, would be more fitting in the, uh, the trivia portion of the, yeah. uh, of the episode. But, um, something I read that I never thought about before. And now it's hilarious mm-hmm. to me. So the whole point of top gun and they explain it when they're in their sort of like orientation at the beginning was, you know, like the, it was like in, was it Korea, the ratio ratio of losing jets to the, you know, shooting down their stars was 12 to one Vietnam was three to one. They went back to 12 to one. They talked about how their fighters had become dependent on missiles. Yeah. So they created top gun for dog fighting, which was using your guns as opposed to missiles and then throughout the whole movie, nobody ever gets shot down with guns. They still are only using missiles. <laughs> so the whole point of it was to learn how to fight with guns. And nowhere in the movie does, even at the <laughs> end of the climax, it's still. Yeah. So uh, the whole funny. point of the movie, they didn't learn a damn thing. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. None of them ever fire their guns. They get guns fired at them. They They do go to guns guns. now and then, but it's not the kill shot. for No. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think the other, the thing that stuck out to me was like they, they, talk about this as being for the best of the best. Mm -hmm. And like, you think it's going to be okay. It's the, that class of 16 guys or 20 guys or whatever it is, but it's 20 guys every six weeks. Like how many fighter pilots are there that are going through this every year, 20 guys every six weeks. Like what, what? I I think I have a very, why aren't they uh, doing this training earlier on? Like, don't they do training as well? And how <laughs> big is the plaque that is going to have all of these names on there yeah. and their Rios, as we've now heard? Because uh, 
Uh, and how big is the plaque in the ladies' room? Because Charlie, yeah, talks about coming back every six to eight weeks or whatever yeah. it is. Um, With a new class of hot shots. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So how fucking exclusive is this? Right. It's not. It's, I, it's that stuck out to me more, I think, this go around yeah. than anything else. Mm. And again, is there like a plaque <laughs> per year that's got 20 names on it or whatever? It's like, it's what's like the Stanley Cup, and the trophy just keeps getting bigger and bigger as they add yeah. a bunch of names to the bottom of it. <laughs> uh, Eric, is this in your opinion? If I, 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 the, I'm making this up as I go along, but uh, um, is this the best uh, fighter jet? fighter pilot movie and uh, uh, yeah, the Tuskegee qualify. Airmen uh, I don't know Pearl Harbor <laughs> <laughs> Dunkirk <laughs> well well, no what was the one that came Hot out that, well that Hot had uh, Tom Hardy in it yeah Dunkirk yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Dunkirk Hot Shots <laughs> 